So the main focus of this research project is on the effects of uh, family building strategies and on children's schooling and labor in uh, urban uh, Burkina Faso. Um, uh, it is focused on Ouagadougou, the capital city, which is a context where we have uh, seen a decline of fertility over the past 20 years. Um, uh, education improvement in uh, uh, children's schooling and learning are um, key determinant for the long-term development process of Susana Africa. And uh, on the other hand, uh, changes in uh, fertility and family structure and uh, can uh, definitely have an impact on children's well-being in terms of schooling. Uh, and uh, the uh, economic literature has argued that family decide um, uh, the number of the children uh, based on what they are expecting to give them as education level. Uh, which is known in the literature as the quality quantity trade-off. And uh, this decision to um, improve children's schooling, uh, which leads to the, uh, a, a small number of ch children, uh, uh, means that we have a negative association between education and the number of schooling. But most of the literature is based on the evidence we have so far has been mainly based on studies in uh, developed countries, in um, Asia, Latin America, while the little evidence we have from Sub-Saharan Africa has failed to uh, highlight this negative association between family side and children's schooling, or even some cases have uh, um, found that this relation is even positive. So this research is trying to mobilize orig uh, very original data to try to access this relation in the context of uh, a Burkina, urban Burkina, where we are observing a change, a change in fertility. So this is the main objective of this project on um, uh, the consequences of family building strategy on children's schooling. Moussa Bougma is uh, one of the PhD students in Montreal. So actually we have some uh, a PhD students working on the data uh, of this research project. And he's working actually on uh, the main question of the research. So um, try to highlight this relationship between family side and children's schooling. And uh, um, this uh, uh, strategy, the methodology uh, he have chosen uh, try to, 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 to highlight the two, the two mechanisms behind this relation between uh, family size and children's schooling. Because um, this association actually uh, can reflect uh, two things. One is uh, uh, the, 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 the resource deletion effect. That means that the, uh, the, the, the less children you have, the best educated they are. This is what we, c we call the resource deletion effect. And the other mechanism is uh, uh, the selection effect, meaning that um, parents uh, uh, decide on the number of children, uh, uh, given that they, they are planning, they are expecting to give them more education. So these two mechanisms, uh, uh, the deletion effect and the selection effect, is what uh, Musa Bouma is uh, trying to to, 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 to to highlight in the in his paper. So this is really uh, fitted on what the project is trying to to answer. La relation entre la taille de la famille et l'éducation des enfants, c'est une relation qui est un peu ambiguë depuis des années au niveau du contexte africain. Voilà. Donc il y a effectivement eu des moments où on a observé que plus on a des enfants, mieux on peut les éduquer. Voilà, ce qui contredisait un peu la théorie de dilution, qui disait que non, c'est moins on a des enfants qu'on peut mieux les éduquer. Mais on a remarqué qu'au cours des dernières années, il y a vraiment eu des campagnes de, de sensibilisation et puis l'accès même aux méthodes contraceptives 
qui font que les gens actuellement prennent conscience qu'ils eh, peuvent aussi en tout cas contrôler leur procréation. Comme les méthodes sont maintenant disponibles, peut-être que les gens anticipent déjà l'éducation de leurs enfants en se disant que non, je vais faire moins d'enfants dans l'espoir de mieux les éduquer. Donc, nous, on a, les données sont vraiment originales. Ça nous a permis de collecter des données sur l'infertilité secondaire des femmes âgées de 35 à 59 ans. Voilà, donc on leur a demandé de savoir est-ce que le nombre d'enfants qu'elles ont actuellement, est-ce que ça a été un choix délibéré ou bien il y a eu un problème quelconque Voilà, donc cette question nous a permis de dégager trois catégories de femmes. Donc il y a vraiment des femmes qui ont dit avec leur conjoint que non, ils n'ont pas, eh, ils ont choisi de limiter intentionnellement leur fécondité. Voilà, c'est la première catégorie. Et la deuxième catégorie, c'est des femmes qui disent que non, on a eu des problèmes d'infécondité, sinon on aurait voulu avoir plus d'enfants. Voilà, généralement, ce sont les femmes plus âgées. Et il y avait une troisième catégorie de femmes, c'était les plus jeunes, qui disaient que non, j ai, j ai, c est, c est, on est en train d'espacer les naissances, voilà pourquoi on a stoppé. D'autres ont dit que mon mari a voyagé, et d'autres ont raconté que non, l'enfant dépendait de Dieu. Et, D'autres aussi ont, ont, ont évoqué des maladies, voilà. Donc, pour effectivement vous, et appréhender l'effet du comportement, nous on a et dégagé ces trois groupes-là et on a focalisé l'analyse sur les deux premiers groupes, à savoir ceux qui ont intentionnellement limité, c'est sûr qu'ils avaient des raisons, et ceux qui ont eu des problèmes d'infécondité, voilà. Et les résultats maintenant montrent que lorsqu'on contrôle tous les facteurs en tenant compte en tout cas de leur niveau de vie, de leurs caractéristiques socio-économiques et, et, et des femmes et des enfants, on se rend compte que les enfants dont les mères ont intentionnellement limité leur fécondité avaient des meilleures probabilités d'accéder à l'école que ceux qui ont eu des problèmes d'infécondité. Voilà. Donc cela suppose que il y a quand même le fait de dans, de limiter volontairement sa fécondité, il y a l'idée derrière de mieux scolariser en fait ses enfants. We have already started the process of disseminating the results. Uh, in last September, in Ouagadougou, we organized a, a national dissemination workshop at ISSP. Uh, with all the research team from Montreal, from France, and uh, our PhD students. And uh, we invited the many stakeholders working in the population and uh, development field, uh, mainly people from the Minister of Health, Minister of Education, because we are also talking about education. And uh, we also invited many NGOs, a civil society organization working in the, the field of uh, 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 reproductive health. So we had many uh, participants to this um, uh, workshop, and uh, we presented the main findings, the first uh, findings and the main findings of a, of a research project during this, uh, this workshop in Ouagadougou. And uh, actually, we, it was very, very fruitful because we had a lot of discussion with the stakeholder and uh, a researcher from other organizations. And uh, um, uh, the idea was that to see how we can continue this kind of uh, uh, opportunity to, to discuss and to, to see how we can go forward with the conclusion, the policy implication of, this, of, the, of, the, of the findings. Mm -hmm. So the other uh, uh, way of disseminating is what we are doing now. Mm -hmm. We are actually, uh, we have been um, Musa and uh, uh, the other PhD students working on the, on the, on the research project. Uh, we are presenting uh, presented papers and different conferences uh, in Busan uh, last August at the USSP uh, conference in, in South Korea and uh, at the PA, but also at the pop of the Population Poverty Network uh, AIDS conference in Nairobi in last January. We also presented the result of a of a research, and uh, now we are in the process to. To, 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 to finalize this paper. They are working to finalize this paper based on the comment we receive from participants to this conference in order to submit this paper to to, to scientific journal. Okay. Uh, because this is really part of a, a, a PhD uh, dissertation. Okay. 
So this is what we are doing so far. But we really want, uh, at some point in time, to to try to 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 to, to, to produce some uh, policy brief. Yeah, this is some of the thing we have really. I think we we have already at ISSP. We have already doing some of this uh, policy brief uh, based on the demographic surveillance system. We call them Waga Focus. So this is one of the means we can use, you know, to 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 highlight some of the key findings of this research and disseminate it uh, uh, largely to the, to, the, to the stakeholders working on the population and health.